Hey everyone, welcome to Devin Heart. I hope you all are doing good and keeping well. So Devin Heart is your one-stop destination to learn penetration testing, ethical hacking, and especially if you are new to cybersecurity and getting into these fields and learning ethical hacking. So without wasting much time and further ado, let's go. So today with this session, we are going to learn Linux privilege escalation. So which is one of the most important part if you are getting into some certifications preparing for them, if you are getting into real life penetration testing activities or engagements or kind of red teaming engagements, then definitely you must know privilege escalation. So let's get started with this. So for today, we are going to use one of the boxes, the Linux privilege escalation box from tryhackme.com yet. This is a wonderful box and a quite of learning. Okay, so without wasting much of the time, let's get started with the articles that are given and the reading material so that we can proceed further and definitely do practice all these stuff. Okay, so privilege escalation is a journey. There are no silver bullets and much depends on the specific configuration of the targeted system. So definitely for sure, privilege escalation is a journey. There are no shortcuts. There is nothing, a uh, silver bullet kind of thing that you'll hit and you'll get onto it. No, you cannot directly shot and get up an interview, uh, get a privilege escalation on any of the systems that you have got an initial hold to. So, and that totally depends upon the specific uh, configurations of the system, like the kernel or uh, let's say, for example, the tools installed, the packages installed, or the applications that have been installed and supported on that particular system. Okay. Although I've told you about how the privilege escalation is and what is it based on. Now the question comes up, what is privilege escalation? And the next uh, section talks about it either. So what is privilege escalation? What does that mean? So it at its core privilege escalation usually involves going from a lower permission account to a higher permission one. More technically, it's the exploitation of a vulnerability, design flaw or configuration oversight in an operating system or application to gain unauthorized access to resources that are usually restricted from the user. Okay, so what it states, what it means. So uh, let's say, for example, you have got an initial hold to an account. It could be a web application account, or it could be a server account, or the system account that you're targeting. And you are not privileged user to perform any privileged activities. Let's say, for example, you would not be able to create any accounts, or you would not be able to delete accounts, change passwords, or view some authorized data. Okay. So these are the things as a low privilege user you won't be able to do. And how this comes into play, it depends upon uh, the design flaw. There could be misconfigurations in the configuration of the server or the configuration files that have been installed for some particular package or uh, tool that are installed on them. Next, talking about exploiting vulnerabilities. Exploiting vulnerabilities could even be related to the kernel version or the kernel that is being used in the Linux system. Okay, then moving upon, let's say you're using Python or you're using Perl or another any other programming language, let's say GCC is installed, the compiler is installed. So they do have their own vulnerabilities depending upon which version is installed on the system. Okay, so all these things comes into play when it talks, when we talk about privilege escalation and traversing through that journey, which leads you to privilege escalation. What is, why is it important? Okay. As I mentioned some of the points, all the points are mentioned over here. Resetting the password, if you are an admin user, you would definitely could do that. Bypass access controls to compromise protected data. There could be some protected data of the organization users uh, that have been enrolled or the people who are working in, uh, in the organization. That is their important sensitive data that needs to be protected. And so if you got access to admin user, or the privileged user, then you can bypass those access controls, which you would not have as a normal user. Okay. Editing software configurations. All right. So 
and next is uh, could be like software configurations anything that is installed let's say apache is installed apache tomcat is installed or something else ssh is installed then you need to tamper with the configuration files you could definitely go and look and tamper with the configuration files or you can get an get and extract a hold on some of the sensitive information that a, a non privileged user must not have or you can uh, use those information to escalate the privileges right enabling persistence definitely if you have compromised a server you are there in the there in that server or the system then you need to enable your existence as well that you are persistent to that system you can log in any time eh, from anywhere whenever you want at any point of time then that persistence comes into play okay changing the privilege of existing user or the new user let's say for example you could see that there is an abc user and you have got a hold to that now you want to change the permissions of that user so that you can traverse and perform some unauthorized uh, unauthorized task commands or that could be unethical so that you are not directly traced or it would directly tamper the user that the user belongs to or that user is susceptible to okay execute any administrative commands so you could perform the administrative functions either so there comes the play so moving further in the next section we have enumeration because definitely enumeration does not stop with the initial foothold itself you need to do enumerate if you are engaged in penetration testing at each and every step okay so let's start with that so what the article says over here enumeration is the first step to have a uh, first step you have to take once you gain access to any system okay you may have accessed the system by exploiting a critical vulnerability that resulted in root level access or just found a way to send commands using a low privileged accounts okay so this could be in two ways that you could uh, definitely exploit a critical vulnerability that could give you a root level access or administrative access or could be a possibility in a other way in a shell that you get a hold of low privileged user but somehow you have exploited the vulnerability and you are executing commands that are there uh, as a sudo or root okay with the root privileges that could be a possibility penetration testing engagements unlike cdf machines don't end up once you gain access to a specific system or user privilege levels as you will see enumeration is an important point during the post compromise phase as it was before so as i mentioned post compromise also the enumeration is very important as it was uh, important in the pre engagement phase once you have not got the foothold okay so there are some specific and important commands that you could run to enumerate the system and once you enumerate the system you definitely get some information that you could use to target and uh, to target that system and to attack that or get a privilege escalation to administrative user or any kind of user with the uh, more with more privileges or higher privileges okay moving on the first is host name if you are familiar with uh, linux and then definitely you are familiar with host name okay host name command will return the host name of the target as the name suggests although this value can easily be changed or have a relatively meaningless string just like ubuntu for example it is written ubuntu something 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 so these strings can be changed by the configurer who is configuring the system okay in some cases it can provide information about the target system roles within the corporate network so if you are engaged in corporate network penetration testing activities or it could be red teaming activities then definitely it would reveal some of the information that could be really helpful to you let's say for example sql prod there could be web prod there could be dev there could be uat sit so you could use all these environments to get foothold and get information about the system let's say you get uh, you get access to uat servers or the uat systems then definitely you will get to know about the code structure or the development structure or the development codes you get the hold to from where you can extract out sensitive information right so there comes all these things into play 
U name minus A will print the system information giving us additional details about the kernel used by the system. Okay, this will be useful when searching for any potential kernel vulnerabilities that could lead to privilege escalation. So U name hyphen A will give you information about the kernel that is installed on the system in terms of Linux. Okay, <coughs> next is hyphen proc. Oh, sorry it's slash proc slash version so it is a proc file system proc fs file okay so you'll be uh, definitely needing something to print onto the uh, terminal so if you want to print the content of this file uh, slash proc slash version you will be using cat c a t okay so the proc file system provides information about the target system processes uh, you will find proc on many different Linux flavors, making it essential tool in your arsenal. Okay, looking at proc version may give you information on the kernel version and additional data such as whether a compiler is installed. So, if you want to figure out which compiler is installed or whether it is installed or not, and if you get hold of uh, that, uh, if you get hold of this information that a compiler is installed, then it is going to be a very additive information in your arsenal when you are going to exploit the server right next is slash xc slash issue file systems can also be identified by looking at slash xt slash slash etc slash issue files okay so again to read this file you definitely need cat command or some uh, some kind of text editor where you would be uh, taking the file and reading the output which is what is stored in this file this file usually contains some information about the operating system okay but can easily be customized or changed while on the subject any file containing system information can be customized or changed for clear understanding of the system it is always good to look at all of these so we have talked about hostname uname hyphen a uh, slash proc slash version right slash hc slash issue so these files could be changed by the configurer to uh, like uh, to uh, not give you a foothold of information okay to distract you from what you are going through right in that case you need to definitely look through all these four steps to get more information and accurate information that you could use for further exploitation right Moving further, we have some commands which are very important and definite to know about the system, what is happening in the system, what is what command, what processes are running, okay, what is the environment of uh, environment variables set to, okay, ID, ls, all these commands are very crucial and crucial and important. Starting with ps command, what ps command does? The ps command is an effective way to see the running processes on a Linux system. Trying ps on your terminal will show processes for the current shell. Okay, so whatever the processes are running on the current shell, it will show those processes. And how what the information that it'll be getting? It's PID, the process ID, which is unique to each and every process that is running. Next is TTY terminal type used. Next is CMD, the command that was used. Uh, or that was used to execute that particular process and for that matter let me clarify that command line parameters will not be revealed over here right moving further ps can be used with some other parameters as well okay so how that works uh, ps hyphen a view all the running processes so if you type ps hyphen a it will show you all the running processes on that terminal if you use ps with a x j f parameter it will show you the process tree as you can sh see over here like this is the process tree i'm uh, getting right so this is how it works moving further if you go with ps a u x where AUX means will show the processes for all users. Okay, all users display the user that launched the process. Okay, show the process that are not attached to the terminal as well. So that if you are in ZSH, okay, or any terminal, so it will show you the processes that are not attached to this terminal as well, but are running on the Linux system or the server. 
okay moving further is the env command the env command will show environment variables okay so let's say if you have python installed so what is the python path has been set to okay what is the shell that has been set to like let's say for example in this screenshot you can see that home path has been set for this user alper you can see that path has been set for all these paths the like user games local games as ben ben so all these paths have been already defined what shell is up to shell is to uh, shell is being used that is zsh sometimes you'll find path to some programming languages like perl python or some compiler information as well which version of java is being used and so on and so forth all this crucial information you'll get the path variable may have a compiler or a scripting language like python that could be used to run codes on the target system or leverage for privilege escalation as i just mentioned and told you so is the information given here sudo hyphen l so this will produce you with the information uh, if let's say i've been logged in as user a and if a user a has uh, some uh, privilege commands that it can run with sudo privileges okay let's say the target system may be configured to allow user to run some or all commands with root privileges sudo minus l command can be used to list all the commands that user can run using sudo let's say for example uh, you are into any of the depart department let's say you are in development department so the person who have configured the server would have given you rights to run python perl or c or some 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 other programming language or some other tools like curl wget or uh, netcat anything could be or let's say wireshark has been installed and you want to use wireshark so those tools could be possible could be a possibility that they have been assigned to you with the privilege uh, with the privileged or the root privileges to run with okay so the sudo minus l would help you figure that out ls one of the most commands most common commands used in linux is probably ls and if you are familiar with linux then definitely ls you definitely know it so ls is best suited when it has worked uh, when it has worked out with or performed with ls hyphen la parameter okay hyphen la is a parameter that would reveal all the files in that particular directory even the hidden uh, hidden files as well let's say for an example in the screenshot you could see dot secrets dot txt is a file which is a hidden file okay if you just simply run ls no ls minus ls hyphen l didn't reveal that file but when you ran ls hyphen la this file was revealed and some of the cases you would even find the ssh folder which is very sensitive to that particular user okay id would help you to get information for example the id command will provide a general overview of the user's privilege level and group memberships and which user groups the user is assigned to what are the permissions that have been uh, assigned to the user or the privileges that have been assigned to the user so all that information you can definitely try to figure that out using the id command now next is the xc password file okay and again to read xc password you for sure need a cat command to print the output on the terminal or a uh, editor some kind of editor you could use gedit or uh, gedit or vim or anything okay so reading the hc password file can be easy way to discover users on the system so definitely you won't get the passwords okay or the password hashes but you will get the user list as you can see root demon this could be some system users let's say game is a user or uh, moving further what i can find so all these are the users okay what you can do next one more important information that i that i would like to highlight is if you try to look for the xc password with home directory okay uh, let's say uh, here in the example so this will give you all the users definitely those are registered on that uh, on that linux system so you will find in home that let's say alp or frank all these are the users that are present in the home directory and most probably if you have registered to log in to that uh, linux system then definitely you will find it in the home directory 
history command definitely history at times could give you the sensitive information let's say the websites the user could have visited uh, either they must have uh, they might have entered some usernames or the passwords in that particular on that particular website so these uh, information you could extract out from the history okay looking at the earlier command with the history command can give us some idea about the target system and <coughs> Uh, and have stored information such as passwords or usernames as i was mentioning if config if config the next command so how does if config works if config so the target system may be a pivoting point to another network the if config command will give us information about the network interfaces of the system the example below shows the target system that has three interfaces at zero ton zero ton one our attacking machine can reach at zero interface but cannot directly access the other two networks so if you look into this uh, screenshot for example there are three other uh, three other different interfaces at zero ton zero and ton one so let's say for example uh, with the ip 10.9.5.1.44 and we are in the same subnet then definitely we can uh, we can reach the machine with this uh, interface but we would not be directly able to communicate with at zero or ton zero as this machine is uh, communicating with so definitely this could help us as a jump host or a mediator to communicate with the other those machines that are standing up behind okay that could be a machine in dmz or uh, that could be a machine standing behind okay next is ip route so if you want to check out the uh, the con or if you want to be confirmed if the network routes are existing or network is communicating with the with the other uh, let's say other interfaces then definitely ip route will going to help you a lot to gather out that information or to confirm on that okay let's say for example you can see here there are ton zero is communicating so all these things will help you out next start so following is an initial check for existing interface and network routes it is worth looking into the existing communication the netstat command can be used with <coughs> several different options to gather information on existing connections so if you would like to figure out information on the existing connections that have been made with the server or any kind of ports that are in listening mode or that are ready to connect then definitely netstat is going to help you a lot in that manner netstat do comes with different parameters and if run with all those parameters could truncate your results as per your need and can help you extract more information and more juicy ones as well so netstat hyphen a shows all the listening ports and established commands netstat minus at or au is going to help you understand and figure out the tcp ports or the udp ports respectively that are listening okay netstat minus l list ports in listening mode these ports are open and ready to accept incoming connections this can be used with t and u to figure out the tcp or the udp ports okay netstat hyphen l list the network usage statistics if you want to check the statistics either of the tcp or the udp connections uh, over the protocol then you can check for ip icmp tcp udp and so and so forth so all these information uh, so netstat minus or hyphen s will show you the statistics how different different protocols are communicating and having the traffic flow moving towards the end slowly so netstat hyphen tp so list the connections with the service name and pid information moving further let's say for example you can see here program name pid what is running then how these are communicating what is the local host communicating with the local port and the foreign address it is communicating with and over which protocol let's say https it is communicating with from the port 337 5456878 so and so forth uh we can see the pid or the program name column is empty as this process is owned by another user okay 
below is the same command run with root privileges and reveal this information as 2641 slash netcat okay let's say for example at times it happens uh, okay so uh, as we can see in the uh, in the screenshot above the pid and the program name is empty and for that reason because uh, uh, this process is being owned by some other user which you don't have access to or you're authorized to see okay for, and to make this clear we have ran the command in the first screenshot with the user normal which was alper and next it was ran with root privileges and we could see pid and the program name for that particular pid okay so this is how it works netstat hyphen i shows interface statistics we'll see below for f0 ton0 are more than are more active than ton1 so as we were uh, getting foothold of uh, statistics on protocols we do can get foothold of the statistics on interfaces as well okay moving further that uh, all these things you can read on your own as well so netstat usage can uh, netstat as usage you will probably see most often in blog posts write ups and courses so there are so many things a hyphen a display all sockets hyphen n to not resolve names o display timers there are so many things to read through okay then there is a one more command which is very useful to find information find files or find directories anything okay so find command searching the target system for important information and potential privilege escalation vectors can be fruitful the built in find command is useful and worth keeping in your arsenal if you would like to find some let's say configuration files if you want to figure out if a programming language or interpreter has been installed on the system or not then definitely you are going to use this okay so if i want to figure out a file in the working directory that i am in then i would go find in the working directory with the name flag.txt if i want to find it in home that means for that particular user <coughs> then i would go find in home directory with the name flag.txt if i want to find a file in root with the type directory so this time i'm not looking for a file i'm finding a directory with the name config then definitely this is how it works find the file with permissions 777 Triple seven means you have all the permissions to uh, read, write, and execute. So with the triple seven permissions, you could find a file like this. Find in root with type and permissions. Ah, uh, what type of document you are looking? You are looking for a file with the permissions that are triple seven. Now next is with the executable files. Home in home directory, if you want to find for a particular user, let's say Frank, then so on and so forth. there we go and there is one more thing to highlight let's say if you use find command then find command will definitely flush a lot of errors on the screen as well with the relevant results and you definitely would want the relevant things on the screen right and for that matter you would be flushing out the results uh, the 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 errors in the command that have been printed to the that could have been printed onto the screen with to null okay so using this this thing with the command to forwarding it to slash dev slash null so it would flush and show the cleaner output on the screen so i was talking about if you want to find which python is installed perl is installed all these things and you can get to get full hold of these information from uh, the system using find command as well so here what is happening you're looking in root for name perl and this asterisk is used as a wild card to figure out with perl perl could be having anything appended to it let's say the version it could be extension like gz or something or it could be a version let's say so let's say 3.4 point something 7 point something and something something like that so the general command with all these things a part of find we could have locate we could have grep we could have cut we could have sort 
so we can use all these commands to truncate our result to the terminal or to get and extract the juicy information that we want rather than the irrelevant ones okay so now comes the time to perform all these commands on a machine that comes with try hack me okay so i'll open up the terminal connect to the uh, connect to the thms network so definitely to access the machine which is in try hack me's network i do need to connect to the uh, vpn okay so i'll use sudo open vpn there goes my file and the super secure password there we go on the next terminal what we are going to do we'll do ssh ssh okay i was trying to do it earlier as well just simply and there we go it should come up soon so the first question asks for the host name of the system and there is a simple command to run the host name and just simply copy this and paste it over here that should be the correct answer though wow yeah we got the correct answer the next command is to get the kernel version let's try uname hyphen a if that gives the information okay it's linux let's see if this is the correct linux version and if that's not then we'll look for something else either okay there we go oh that was the correct answer so which linux it is what i can see is ubuntu from the above command but not the exact name of the linux okay so what we can do we can read through the proc fs file system okay and for that we need the cat command cat slash proc slash version and there we go it tells us it is ubuntu 4.8.2 slash 19 or hyphen 19 i think that should be the answer if i'm not wrong this should work ups nope this didn't so this is the linux version 3.3.14 okay let's look for the other command as well slash the other one was let me look at it slash xc slash issues okay let's go read that slash xc slash issues okay uh, that was issue just only slash xc slash issue uh, if i'm not wrong okay there you got the version of ubuntu as well so it is ubuntu 14.0.14.04 lts there you go just copy and paste it here that should do your work sorry there we go okay so as we were discussing that running the command proc version would also give you some more information and that information is if a compiler is installed or not and there we get the information gcc version 4.8.2 is installed so this gives the information about the compiler that has been installed either so i'm writing all this gibberish text for the machine to be interactive because if i leave the machine the machine will again go on interactive and would not respond again okay so that's why i'm doing that now if i would want to look the python i can use the command which python if that works and help us okay no this just give the path we try this as well with okay no this didn't work so next what we can do we can simply use the find command find in the root with the file name name as python and we want to we, we are adding a wildcard character because we want everything starting with python dev slash null flushing out the errors to null and there we go 
and I hope this would come up with some useful results okay so what kind of result that we are looking for it should be a three pointer version something three dot four dot something or something like that 3.4.2, 2.7. Point something. It should be like that. What I can get from here? Let's go. It says Python 3.4, but not the other third decimal place value. 2.7. Three. Let me figure that out. Uh, 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 I might get the information soon. Let's scroll more, a bit more, a bit more. I hope scrolling down would be an effective effort. Okay, so we have tried find, we have tried all the commands that are given. But if some language is installed like Perl, Python or JavaScript, okay, then we can use one more thing and even PHP also minus v that is the version command for most of the programming languages or the scripting languages and you can extract out the version that has been installed and set for this particular user and if i do that i simply got the version 2.7.6 and this should definitely produce the right answer here whoa boom <laughs> with a bit of efforts using all the commands that were uh, there that we learned and with just a bit of common sense we got the answer right now just clear this and last question which says what vulnerability seems to affect the kernel or the target system then we are going to look for an exploit related to this kernel okay copy this and we will look for cv against this and there we have an exploit also so just copy the CVE, this should definitely work fine. Copy and paste. Whoa, finally we have finished the, finished the task. Okay, this was task number three, which, uh, which rolled us through all the information and all the commands that could be really helpful to learn and not just learn, to enumerate and have an initial foothold in the Linux privilege escalation kind of thing or the situation. So once you get a foothold to a box or a machine or the Linux machine, then you could definitely try these commands, okay, to get more information about the system, which could help you to get to a higher privilege user or root privileges on the system. Okay, that's it for now. We'll meet soon. So see you there. Bye for now.